Hello, and welcome to Living Faith Lutheran Church. I wanted to take a moment to welcome each and every one of you and give you a little insight into who we are and what we're about before we begin worship today. The name of our congregation is, of course, Living Faith, and the word congregation is inclusive of all those who choose to worship with us, no matter where they are in the world. The reality is we're no longer defined by a simple physical address. The Martin Luther in me wants to ask the question, what does this mean? It means that the Holy Spirit has powerful things in store and the daily and the, and daily the Spirit is broadening our horizons and beckoning, motivating, urging and pushing us to a deeper actualization of our name. Thanks, Pastor. That really cleared that all up. What this means is that I was thinking about our name and I had one of those schoolhouse rock moments when I realized that the living in our name functions both as an adjective and as a verb. As an adjective, living describes the noun faith as one with, as Luther would describe it, a profound love of God for God's people and for all of the whole creation. As a verb, what that's where things get exciting. As we worship, and worship is not just this short video time in the midst of a 168-hour week, worship is about living faith. The Schoolhouse Rock song says, Verb, I get my thing from action, to work, to play, to live, to love. All 168, 24-7, 365, until our faith becomes sight in the kingdom of God. So we wish you peace and invite you to live faith with us whenever you, wherever you reside on our planet, to be active and to bring justice, hope, peace, and comfort to a hurting world, to clothe the naked, to lift up the lowly, to bring healing to the sick, to feed the hungry, to console the brokenhearted, and to make Christ known both in both word and deed. If you so desire, if you're searching for a church family either to worship with in person or from afar, a family with which to share your joys and sorrows and triumphs and failings, your hopes and your fears, your gifts and your talents, we want you to know that you're welcome with us. And I would be remiss if I didn't make, uh, make, it aware, make everyone aware that you can subscribe to our newsletters and find my contact information at livingfaithlutheran.org. We hope to hear from you. God bless, and let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God for whom we wait. In the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that, our, that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self and material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. God of joy, we come before you with eager hearts, 
We still wait in hope, and yet we are filled with your song of love. We light candles, trusting that the smallest flame can drive out our greatest fears. We anticipate your coming among us with peace and thankfulness. As we await your coming, light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your hope. God of joy, as we light this fourth candle, we remember with gratitude the song you placed in Mary's heart. May we know the joy of your presence. Open our hearts to meet friends and neighbors with the same welcome Elizabeth gave Mary. May our joy be multiplied. Light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your joy. God of joy, we remember today our brothers and sisters in Africa and beyond who work and steward the land to provide for their families. Incline our hearts to listen to their prayers. Teach us to sing a song of hope and to join our voices as one. Let us share our abundance so that others may not only survive, but thrive. Light a flame within us. May we shine with the brightness of your hope. God of joy, keep our spirits rejoicing and proclaiming the holiness of God's name. Guide us in these Advent days until our Savior is born among us. Turn our attention to you, the one who is our song, our hope, and our joy. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the light that has no end. Amen. Prophet Micah, having pronounced judgment upon Judah, speaks of a future shepherd king who, like David, will come from the small town of Bethlehem. Ephrathah refers to the area around Bethlehem. This king will restore Israel and bring peace. New Testament writers understood this passage to be referring to Jesus. Our first reading comes from Micah, chapter 5. Verses 2 to 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, 
From you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origins is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up unto the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today comes from the book of Luke. You, Lord, have lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices, God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. The author of Hebrews uses the image of religious sacrifice to convey the significance of Christ's coming. Through obedient acceptance of Christ's will, Christ allowed his own body to become the greatest sacrifice of all one through which we are made a holy people. Our second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 to 10. Consequently, said, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you had not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to, your, to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desire nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offerings offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Could you imagine being the angel Gabriel, God's messenger? You get called up as an angel to fulfill your very purpose as an angel, being a messenger. You get your first solo assignment. At least that's all we or what we know about. And you are supposed to reveal the meaning of visions to some guy named Daniel in Assyria. Daniel is a man of God. Awesome. Check. His three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were saved from a fiery furnace in a miracle. Oh, wow. Check. And Daniel himself was saved in a lion's den when God shut the mouths of the lions, plus God had given Daniel the ability to interpret dreams himself, which he had used with faithfulness and success. This is awesome, you think. What a great first assignment. This will be a piece of cake. Well, he delivers the message, and it's received by Daniel, and all goes well. Quite some time later, Gabriel gets called up again. He needs to deliver a message to a priest named Zechariah. He probably thought, I know him. He's a priest. Great guy. He and his wife have been having or have had trouble trying to have a baby. But unfortunately, they were unable to. And now she is aged out of her childbearing years. So he asks, what's the message? They're going to have a baby. Oh, wow. A full on big time miracle. They're going to be so excited. This is so awesome. I love this job. It's so much fun. What a breeze. Well, Gabriel appears to Zachariah and he startles him, but he tells him not to be afraid in traditional angelic form. And then bearing this great news of miraculous pregnancy, now he and how he needs to be named John. What an awesome experience it will be. How his kid will be filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. That he will bring many of his people back to the Lord. And how instrumental his son will be in preparing the way of the Messiah. And he's telling this to a priest. One of the people that should be able to immediately jump on board with a message from the Lord. Yet he receives nothing but the, I can't believe this treatment from a priest while working in the temple, literally in God's own house among God's people. This obviously did not sit well with Gabriel, who told Zechariah to shut up, literally, and Zechariah was unable to speak until eight days after John was born. So I imagine Gabriel's pretty disappointed and feeling less optimistic about his job. But the wait for his next mission only lasts a very, very short time. And he gets called up and told he's going to the show. He's been chosen to deliver the most important message of all time, solo. Gabriel's probably still stinging a little from the Zechariah mission, but he's still pretty optimistic. And he, and he asks what the message is. He's kind of crossing his fingers. God will be born in the flesh, the Messiah, and will bring salvation, grace, truth, and light to all of humanity. Wow, that's awesome. So who do I give the message to? For reasons known only to God, God has chosen a young girl named Mary. She's a poor teenager from a little nowhere town called Nazareth. You can find her there. Okay, so I tell her and her husband, uh, no, she's not married, but she is engaged. You know, they um, stone a woman for that down there, right? There's no way she's going to want to do this. And you know how I lost my temper with Zachariah. And what if she gets all sarcastic with me? Because, you know, 
Zechariah was a priest, and of all people, priests and rabbis should be the easy ones. So this is, along with this being difficult to believe, she doesn't seem like a very likely choice or candidate, which makes it even more difficult. And it's a life and death thing for her. Gabriel, each case is different. And God has chosen this young lady for a reason. And he has chosen you to tell her. I think that people can come to be the likely people, the ones that seem to have it all, the ones that everyone expects to have all the answers because of material success or power or where they're born or appearance. And they can come to believe that they have it all figured out and that they have come to what they have on their own. And they think, about just themselves more and more and seek God's path less and less. Gabriel, this kid's got nothing. Tell you what, trust God and go do your part and let's just see what happens. So obviously Gabriel went and he appeared to Mary. This is, this is the part that set in motion my imagination. This is the part that got me thinking about what was happening and then what was not happening. Gabriel leads off with, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. And Mary doesn't say anything. Now, all I can imagine is Gabriel thinking, This kid's got nothing and I'm telling her that she's favored. There's no tangible proof, just me and my words. She thinks I'm crazy. So in an attempt to fill the silence, he defaults back to angelic tradition by saying, don't be afraid. But Mary doesn't seem to be frightened, as indicated in all the other angelic appearances to other folks. She's puzzled, and she's puzzled at this greeting. He reads her face and seems to spit out the rest of the message before the expected sarcastic reply. You have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary, understanding the mechanics of pregnancy, calmly questions the missing piece of the puzzle. Gabriel, I'm sure, is a little relieved and perplexed and reassures her that God will take care of it in God's way and points to the miracle in her cousin Elizabeth's life as an example of God's loving activity and ability. If things are going to fall apart, it's going to be right now. But Mary's reply essentially says, as God's messenger, you've told me that despite not possessing All we consider as evidence of God's approval, God thinks I'm okay. That God knows I'm here and cares about me and is choosing me to do this. And, 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 and for God to become one of us, full on, a full on person like me, and live here like me, and I will get to hold him and talk to him and rock him to sleep. All the things like people like me do, both the good and the bad. Well, you speak for God, and I am God's servant. So let's do this. We can see Mary's attitude and motivation shining forth in her statements that we call the Magnificat. She is propelled 
by her by joy, her joy in witnessing the grace of God and being proclaimed good enough or favored or okay. This is the good news that despite all of the stuff, all of the reasons we give and all of the evidence that we put forward as being not good enough, God loves us. It's our deepest human yearning to be loved, to be connected, to be considered okay. Now, there are arguments on the internet that discuss a well-known quote of Sally Field when she accepted an Oscar. Matthew Lieberman wrote an article in Social Psychology examining an interesting phenomenon surrounding her speech. He wrote of her quote. She, he, he said, she said, you like me, she declared. You really like me with a strong emphasis on the word really. It's a classic example of the adulation that actors crave. There are two errors, though, in the previous paragraph, he said. One more important than the other. The minor error, Sally Field did not actually say this line in her acceptance speech. The real line in her speech was, I can't deny the fact that you like me. Right now, you like me. We probably misremember the quote because of the other more important error, he says. It isn't just actors who are primarily motivated by being liked. We all are. The misquote is so sticky because it exemplifies a central human need. Lieberman then discusses a study of how the human brain reacts to statements of acceptance by others. He and another researcher discovered that the brain reacts like that when you receive, like it does when you receive your favorite things. He writes, in a follow-up study, Elizabeth Castle and I looked at how rewarding these touching statements really were. We asked a group of individuals to bid money to try to win these statements. In the end, a large portion of the participants were willing to give back their entire payment for the study just to get to see those special words. We may give, up, we may give lip service to the power of money, but the power of knowing we are loved can be just as potent. It's easy to imagine our reactions to getting this rarely shared positive feedback from the people that matter most to us. But would social feedback from complete strangers have the same effect, he asked. Surprisingly, yes. Imagine Penelope, a 12-year-old lying in a scanner watching as a series of faces of other kids appears on a screen. Penelope has never met any of the people she's seeing, but she is informed after seeing each face whether that person wanted to have an online chat with her or not. Participants like Penelope showed increased activity in the brain's reward system when finding out that, that those strangers wanted to have an online chat with them. So we all long to be wanted. We all long to be liked and cared for and included. Gabriel's message not only brought that love and grace to Mary, but as she points out, to everyone. So as a messenger, I say to all of you, God, the creator of the universe and author of life, thinks you're okay. Worth living a life as a human for, worth being loved and rejected, and even being killed on a cross. God likes you. No scratch that. God loves you. 
God really loves you. So remember it and cherish it in your heart and share that love and grace with others that they too may know the love of Christ. Amen. watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for our every need. Use the church's gifts and ministries to your service. Bring your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, and melting ice caps. Made us, make us servants to your creation that brings forth abundant life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, acti activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to imbalances of power. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your love kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort those struggling with infertility and those who await test results are, are in treatment and hospice care. And those in need, especially your servants in our prayer list, and those whom we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministry of this congregation and community. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those who, like Mary, were courageous in their witness. Give us such courage unto the day when you fulfill all things. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come, you come among us in the places we least suspect. Receive these prayers in those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. 
Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.